Hey, good morning. I'm here with Keith Murphy uh, with Essex Mortgage. I wanted to um, let you know we are going to be doing this every Friday morning, about a five to ten minute show, just to update all of you on the mortgage market and housing. And um, so, first of all, of course, thank you, Keith, for being here and being willing to share all of your expertise and information with me. I know you're really busy, so um, I'll just let you know, first, on our end, we're doing virtual open houses this weekend. We've got three of them that we're doing, uh, just to put that out on Facebook Live to be able to share with people what is going on in the homes that we do have available and listed. So. Um, uh, I know that these are really scary times right now. Um, we definitely have seen a slowdown in the number of showings and um, people are really worried about you know, their 401k, their health, their jobs, that sort of thing. And I don't want to come across as you know, being like a harbinger of doom, but obviously we do want to deliver the truth of what we're seeing out there. So um, first of all, if we could get right to the, um, a couple of questions. We've been hearing a lot of craziness in the mortgage market with this 0% interest rate that the Fed just um, passed. And then um, mortgage rates, on the other hand, we've seen come up a little bit. Can you explain what's going on? Yeah, actually, I think, you know, there's two dynamics that are happening in the market. One is we've basically gone from 2008 to 2020 in one month. Going back to the financial crisis when things were seizing up and people were seeing bank failures, there was a lot of uncertainty in the financial markets and it caused disruption. And that's what we're experiencing again now is uncertainty. And when it comes to the zero interest rate, that's for the Fed funds rate. So I'm just gonna define what that is. The Fed funds rate is the interest rate that banks charge each other for overnight lending. Think of it if you had a retail store, you've got to balance your cash register to your receipts every day, and it's got to be even. Well, if there is some receivables that haven't come in yet, you've got to bring in capital to make that cover. And that cost of doing business for banks has been reduced to zero, but it didn't have a direct impact on mortgage lending. That's more so tied to the 10-year treasury bond yield. If you look at bond prices on the 10-year treasury and add 150 basis points to it, typically you're gonna see that that's where the 30-year fixed rate is, but that's not what's happening. Like I said, back in 2008, the markets got disrupted. They're disrupted again because basically investors buy mortgage-backed security bonds. And those bond prices, when they do go up, they bring rates down. Well, what we saw a couple of weeks ago after the Fed announcement was the market seized up. Investors got worried just like we are, just like our clients are, of what does the future look like? So the first thing they do is pull back on their investing of mortgage-backed securities. That made the bond prices go down and the interest rates go up at the exact same time of the Fed announcement. So that's why there was a lot of confusion. There is some good news. There is a silver lining in that the Federal Reserve did bring in huge amounts, trillions of dollars of economic stimulus, not just to our economy, but also to the bond markets. And unfortunately, when the stimulus started at first, was being directed to treasuries. And I think the thought was, we have to generate all this revenue to pay for this stimulus aid, which um, is part of the CARES Act. And that stimulus is gonna come from the sale of treasury bonds. If those yields aren't low, they're not going to generate the income that they need to stimulate the economy. So a lot of their monies went to buying treasuries to bring the yields down and bring the bond price up. And mortgages kind of took it on the chin. The Fed realized that as mortgage rates literally went from the low threes, mid threes to over 4% overnight, that that was going to be a huge impact on the housing market. And they quickly redirected money to mortgages. Uh, what I'm seeing on my side of the fence, and I'm watching the bond trading screens live all day long, is that most of the Fed money is going to conforming loans, which are the 5, 10, 400 balances and below. And they're going to two products, and that's the 30-year fixed and the 15-year fixed. The 20-year, the 25-year, the 10-year, 
any of the ARM products and some of the government loans and definitely high balance aren't getting Fed stimulus. So those rates are still kind of wonky, if you will. But when you look at the interest rates for the 30 year and the 15 year, they're significantly lower than they were just even a week ago. I'll just give you a quick quote. And this would be for somebody who's a well-qualified buyer or a client who's looking to refinance that has 20% equity and a good credit score, say 740 and higher. The 30 year fixed with no points this morning. Um, the market opened at 3.625 and for the 15 years at 3.125. So still historically low levels and down from where we were just, you know, a week or so ago. I think well, I that, lost that's all great there. news. Um, so, and, and thank you for that explanation because I think that that's where um, a lot of people have really uh, been confused. So are you, or not are you, but but how are you seeing these changes impact your your mortgage application clients right now? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. It's a dynamic that's changing day by day. So I can't stress that enough that whatever we're educating on and putting out today could be different by this afternoon or come Monday. But credit is definitely tightening up. Again, if you were an investor or if anybody watching was an investor of mortgage-backed securities, you want your investment to perform well. You want to get all of your capital back plus a return. That's the idea of investing. So the credit standards have been risen. Minimum credit scores are now 680. Uh, Debt-to-income ratios are being watched. You definitely still have to be fully employed. And if you've had your hours cut back or you are on a temporary layoff, you're going to have difficulty qualifying qualifying for a mortgage right now. Um, just out this morning, two behemoths, Wells Fargo and Chase, both pulled out of the jumbo market. Jumbo markets are not securitized by the government. They're not insured by the government. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac do the conforming loans. Jumbo loans are left up to individual investors to insure themselves. So they're underwriting it and taking the risk. The two largest players in the market pulled out of jumbo this morning. So there's something new for you right there that's going to impact people that that higher price point, say over 770,000 price point, there's going to be um, some difficulty finding financing right now. Interesting. Yeah. I, I have a friend who is an underwriter for the jumbo side of Wells Fargo and they do portfolio all of those products, I know. So um, I'll be having a conversation with him later today. Um, bottom line, you talked about the fact that rates are, are changing often. And um, do you have any um, sense, just your gut sense from being doing this for 25 years? Do you have any sense of where rates are going right now? I think because I, I don't have that crystal ball that I wish I had. I think that if we stay in the middle lane and we talk about that conforming 30 year fixed rate loan and the 15 year fixed rate loan with good credit, good debt to income ratios, I think we're not going to see anything but continued low rates and the markets will not be disrupted like they were in 2008 as far as financing is concerned. But for those that, you know, needed a bank statement program because they're self-employed and they don't report enough income on their taxes or they needed those jumbo loans or they've got lower FICOs or need down payment assistance. They're, those are going to be where it's going to be a little bit more difficult and we're going to have to strategize and put together game plans for maybe 30, 60, 90 days out versus being able to get an approval right away. But again, if you stay in the middle lane and you're kind of looking at vanilla financing, then and there shouldn't be any disruption. And I think we're only going to see those mortgage rates continue to remain low and maybe even go lower. When you, um, if you could just clarify real quickly, when you say um, vanilla financing, are you talking about your normal 20% um, down? Um, are, are we going to be seeing, are you able to do anything with FHA and VA right now? Or are those programs tightening up as well? Uh, they're definitely tight 
hanging up as far as guidelines are concerned, but that's a great question. Uh, so to make sure I'm clear, you don't have to have 20% down to stay in that middle lane. You can still purchase a home with as little as 3% down on a conventional loan, 3.5% down on FHA, zero down on VA. It's just that the, the, the debt to income ratios, the credit scores are gonna need to be higher. Um, but those down payment or loan to value levels haven't changed yet. Uh, great information, Keith. Thank you so much. Um, in uh, light of everything that is going on, on a positive note, I'll just share that, um, as I said, I've had um, some showings this week, and we are doing those showings either virtually with the agent coming and doing a Zoom call with their client on the other end, or um, we actually have a few in person, but we've got new guidelines um, that the California Association of Realtors has asked us to implement with um, with respect to you know allowing a person into the property, um, you know a disclosure that the buyer has to sign, that the seller has to sign to protect themselves and and just be a, a, acknowledge and be aware of the situation. So um, that said, uh, what is the most positive thing that you've experienced this week, either personally or in your business? How about I could be one of each? On the personal side. I would say um, under this new world we're living in, our company decided it would be in everybody's best interest health-wise that the entire company work from home and that we do not do face-to-face -face client interactions at this time. So I've had to get comfortable doing this. And this is my first live uh, video ever. And so I'm getting out of my comfort zone and that's a pop time you're stepping out of that comfort zone. That's great. I am so uh, proud growing. of you. So <laughs> hopefully half the people that logged in haven't already shut, you know, shut off. Uh, but on the business side, you know, I think it's very easy right now when you turn on the news or just keep your eyes open to what's going on. It's scary. And we've never been in a pandemic situation like this. Everybody's health is at risk. People's employment's at risk. Their 401ks have gone down. And the future of housing, nobody knows what that's going to look like three to six months from today. So the natural reaction, I think, to that uncertainty is to pull back and say, well, uh, nothing's probably happening, right? That there is no sales going on. And from my side of the fence, that's not what's happening. There are still plenty of clients that need, for what varied reasons, job relocations, getting married, having a baby, um, that need to sell their home and buy another, or first-time home buyers who, you know, just got married, they're living in an apartment, had a baby, and they want their own home, and they know with these historically low interest rates, because they feel comfortable with their employment and income, they're still buying. What one uh, you said you wanted like a, a case that was very positive. There was a listing last weekend that came on the market in the Lake Forest, Orange County area, and it was priced at full valuation. But the uh, person that lived there unfortunately uh, deceased in the home and was a heavy smoker. So when you see the pictures of the home, like the walls, the ceiling, the carpet where the furniture had been was normal color, but everything else was black. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the property, but I was told that you, before you walk through the front door, you could tell that somebody was smoking in there for 30 years quite heavily. So I thought, well, gosh, this listing is going to sit on the market for a little while under these current market conditions, but that was not the case. In fact, there were, from what I was told by the listing agent, over 40 showings in the first 40 hours. And by the third business day, there were 15 offers. Again, because the seller was deceased, it's a, it's a trust sale. So there's an attorney that's representing the family from the uh, seller that's you know, negotiating everything. And he decided they were going to take the 15 offers they received and only counter back the top five. And they did so, and one of them was selected, and luckily it was my client. But they went in uh, to escrow over market value. 
those were the types of things that we were seeing before this COVID virus hit us unexpectedly. And I'm still seeing it as recently as a week ago. So the market's definitely going to shift. There's going to be people that are going to sit on the sidelines and probably rightfully so and wait and see what the future looks like. But really, I think the positive is for people that still need to buy and sell, the financing's fantastic and the liquidity is there to make the loan happen. And uh, there's, you know, a lot of vibrancy in the market still. That's a great example of uh, somebody needing to sell and a buyer being able to take advantage of the fact that they are still able to qualify and be able to purchase. And, you know, there are homes out there that, you know, maybe they need a little bit of sweat equity, but that's a, a perfect opportunity for someone to be able to, to purchase where, and, and as it turned out, there, there was quite a bit of competition, but, um, you know, I know that there's plenty of other areas in Southern California where the same thing is happening and there may not be quite so much competition to purchase. So there might be some uh, fantastic opportunities for those first time buyers or possibly investment purchasers. But yeah, that's a great, great, perfect a real life story. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. So listen, I know that you've got to go. You've got to probably uh, list as long as your arm of things that you need to tackle today. And I certainly do too, but I really appreciate your time, your expertise, and I look forward to uh, seeing what happens over the next week. And hopefully it'll be some, some more good news and good things and uh, that we'll all just you know, keep calm and carry on as they say. And uh, appreciate your time today, Keith. Uh, uh, absolutely. Kelly, thanks for uh, putting this together. It was fun. And uh, I'll just part with my own positivity. And that is, uh, this too shall pass. Yes, we've never seen these kind of events impact our lives the way they are now. But there'll be one day, whenever that is, I don't know. But things will be back to normal. I think we just need to keep our focus on that and stay as positive as we can, support each other, be kind, and uh, everything will be all right. So you have a great day, Kelly. Thanks so much, Keith. I appreciate it.